Okay, hello everyone. Um, so thanks a lot for joining. I know that is a difficult time, like it's Friday afternoon, late afternoon. So I'm very happy that you managed to, to connect and be with us. Um, super happy today that I have with me a former colleague that I <laughs> had the chance to work with her a bit before she leaves, uh, Lorena Lobato, uh, who was working uh, with me in IT department. And unfortunately, she left us and she went in Fermilab, <laughs> where now she works as a computer specialist uh, at uh, the computing services specialist at Fermilab. But uh, I will let her um, tell us a bit more about herself. So I will uh, give her the floor. So welcome, yeah. Lorena, and thank you very much for your time, because I know that it's super early there now. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, thank you, Florentia. I'm so happy uh, like to, to have this and uh, to have the opportunity. I remember, and I think that you were at that time as well, uh, when uh, Woman in Technology started at that moment. And I'm sorry for the background, because I think uh, I don't, we you know, don't hear anything. Uh, we have some, uh, some noise here around. So um, I remember that when Woman in Technology started at CERN, uh, we were, uh, you know, like as well, a part of it. And I remember these first interviewers and uh, thinking at that moment, oh, I would like in some point to have uh, the same opportunity in Lucas now, you yeah. know, like uh, some years after. So uh, for those who uh, don't know me, I'm Lorena Lobato, I'm originally from Spain, I'm 38 years old, I'm computer services specialist here at Fermilab. Um, um, mainly um, from, from scientific computing division, storage group, and uh, I hold two, well, my background is in computer science. Um, I hold two master uh, degrees, one in computer engineering, another in information systems. I have worked at Fermilla for the past, I think, the five years. And uh, mainly, as I said, I'm, I'm part of the storage group and I'm running different projects, um, uh, mainly focused on, on data transfer, um, informa information distribution, and uh, yeah, that's mostly like this. Um, previously, I was working at CERN uh, for I think around uh, like seven years, seven years. Uh, in different groups, uh, part of the team at BAT, uh, where me and uh, Florentine, we were working together. I was as well a service manager, DevOps engineer. I was working as well in databases in the PH department as software engineer. And uh, previously, I was working as well as consultant. I think I was for one year, uh, you know, in in Spain. And uh, yeah, that's my my background. Pretty heavy, <laughs> by yeah, <I> would say. Totally. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you you mentioned that you have uh, two two masters. Yeah. Uh, they were at the same time, or you took them in a different. No, so the first one was like uh, during my student uh, time at in, in Spain. So uh, the first one, it was in computing engineering um, there. And then the other one, I just recently uh, got graduated, uh, cum laude here at, at Chicago. And uh, yeah, so there was different times of my life. One when I was like 15 years ago, and the other one I was right now. Wow. So as you can see, I, I never stopped learning, so. Congratulations, first of all. Thank you so you just much. Got your... I'm really happy about See? that. <laughs> yeah. And actually, it's very interesting because I have this question. Uh, yeah. What do you think it's preferable to have a master after your bachelor or to work for a couple of years and choose afterwards? You know, I think that this is a really personal um, opinion because like, for example, in Spain, I think that the more so like right now, everyone, what is doing is like studying a bachelor and then afterwards is doing a master's, right? Exactly. Uh, and I personally, I find really hard to know what you want to dedicate the rest of your life when you are 18 years old, 20 years old, right? Um, in this case, I, I think that uh, for me, it was easier to do the master's degree Mm -hmm. Like, uh, you know, when at the same time that I was working because I had already a, a, a professional experience that uh, helped me to understand better things, even if it, it was in another language, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I would say that uh, I, I would do, honestly, I would do both okay. <laughs> because I think that uh, um, it depends on what you want to dedicate your life, right? Uh, if you want to do a PhD, of course, it's, mm -hmm. it's better if to do okay. it right away as soon as you finish your studies. 
uh, but if it's like me that uh, you don't do a PhD, that uh, you just want to uh, keep yourself on track um, with your professional career, I think that uh, it, it could be nice to have another uh, master's. It can right. always help you and to keep being promoted, you know. Of course, of course. Right. You are right, actually. Yes. It mm. depends on what you want. If you want an academic uh, career, you have to maybe do it exactly, exactly after bachelor. Mm. But wasn't it challenging to work and actually have a master? Because it wasn't online, I think, right? It was... Uh, no, it was... Uh, you know, that that is funny because it's like... Um, it was really challenging just just well it's it's because you know we work for international uh, uh environment that it's like uh, you know we do science uh, mm -hmm. so we work a lot and the thing is that uh, uh it was challenging the way that uh, you were working like an i don't know n nine hours and then you have like a five hours or four hours of class um you know like here is quite different, right? In Spain, you have like a, a, a class every day uh, and you have like, a, I don't know, theory in the morning and practice like a, a labs in on, on the, in the afternoon. But here it's like a, you have like a four or five hours of class, like right away uh, without maybe 10 minutes for resting. Wow. And uh, of course it was challenging. And on top of that, there was the pandemic. Mm -hmm. uh, that it was challenged because at that moment, uh, the reason that I, I was applying for uh, Chicago is that uh, I could go like in person to class. I prefer, I personally prefer that, um, especially when uh, English is not my native uh, language. Um, but then the pandemic came, and then I had to be forced to be online for the rest of of the masters. With the, it was it was okay, but uh, you know, uh, of, course, of course, it was always challenging. With everything. of course, and it's mm -hmm. impressive. Whenever I hear people doing that, I'm like impressed because I see myself after work like it's not that you're doing something that is not relevant I mean you are in, mm -hmm. on a computer the whole day working and then yeah. you do the same thing so of course it's very very tough and yeah but, yeah but do, did you feel that you have um, the support to do that from your working environment let's say like yeah definitely okay that's perfect. something that I love from Fermilab yeah. because uh, Fermilab uh, has a um, it's called TAP uh, TAP mm -hmm. program mm -hmm. call it like that um, what it means I think it's like tuition assistant program and uh, Fermilab supports uh, your uh, your studies your career your your eager for for growing professionally and uh, yeah definitely and as you can imagine, you know, United States, the the studies in United States are quite, quite, quite more expensive than in Europe. I'm pretty so sure. I really appreciate that because they were supporting my career and uh, my studies. But at the same time, I have an amazing uh, supervisor who mm -hmm. was always supporting me in the case that I, I was really stressed or I had to have um, time to for myself for studying or for going to class or whatever. He was always supporting and, uh, well, my okay. supervisor, my, my department in general. So... I think that uh, that it was great. Um, I think that I couldn't have done it if if I didn't have the support from from my workplace, of course. Of course, of course, makes sense. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it, this is amazing, and it's uh, it's very very nice that, that you mentioned that uh, you had all this support because it's very important. Yeah, um, that, that is something definitely, and uh, and as well, of course, but uh, that's not something that you want to study and then Fermilab says, okay, put the money, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, you have to uh, say, I mean, and then the process of accessing, uh, accessing to the University of the United States is a long process. You have to, especially as an international uh, student, mm -hmm. you have to, um, you know, deliver uh, different documents, like, for example, demonstrate that you speak English, even mm -hmm. as a matter if you were living in another country, you have mm -hmm. to do, again, the exam, um, then okay. apply for different universities, then wait that you are uh, accepted, and then that's when the hard work starts. Is, is the so, GMAT uh, GRE, right? The, the exam? Uh, it depends. Yeah, it depends of, of your career. Uh, of, like, for example, if you have like a professional experience, mm -hmm. you can uh, get weight uh, with different uh, okay. courses or even to access to the university. In that case, I, I chose uh, here in uh, Chicago, as I say, I applied to three mm -hmm. universities around the United States and I was accepted in all of them, mm -hmm. but I decided to go for Chicago because I could go, you know, um, in person. 
which mm. is funny because then the yep. pandemic came in, <laughs> it had to be online. So. so I guess because they invest, let's say, money on this degree, they want mm. also specific grades. Like uh, Oh, yeah. Yeah, you have to, as far as I remember, um, as I said, I graduated summa cum laude, so I had like, you know, the, the maximum grade all the time. But I think that uh, the, the, I think that at the minimum is a B, which is some kind, well, it depends on the country, mm -hmm. you know, it would be eight out of 10. Um, otherwise they couldn't, you know, uh, like uh, uh, okay. give you the budget for the next year. And as well, uh, they understand that you are a full-time worker, so they cannot let you to register in more than one or two courses per okay, semester because otherwise makes sense i think that i did once uh or twice that uh, i was registered in two courses per semester and uh, it was too much in some point even my supervisor was like you can you know i was losing even my hair <laughs> you know? too much stress yeah so so you had to work to to do mm -hmm. a master and actually have the best grades okay yeah, Just yeah. Just <laughs> but that's because I'm I'm quite yeah, you know I like to challenge myself and I wanted to be you know since a uh, uh, family was supporting my career I, I didn't want to let them down right I just wanted to to be the best and uh, yeah the, and try to do as much as I I could so and you I, I know you I know you that's why I wanted this interview because <laughs> it's very nice to motivate people to follow their dreams even if they're challenging and hard. But yeah, that is a good thing because I think the most important is that you are surround, you are surrounded by people that are, you know, support you and encourage you to to do all the, your best and as well to always, you know, keep it growing professionally and, and personally as well. Perfect. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so, what was the percentage of women uh, in your um, in your uh, the master? And did they have? Um, technical background or they were from different fields? We oui, that's a tricky question because uh, I think uh, here, at least in my master's, you know, the every year is different. Mm -hmm. It's not like I can, you have the same mates uh, every year. Mm -hmm. So there were, of course, many people from, from different courses and so on. But I would say that uh, uh, probably 40% were women and uh, technical background, something that I was quite um, impressed here is that uh, there were many people from non-technical uh, bachelor. Okay. Uh, let's gonna say like that, you know. Mm -hmm. um, some people were coming from psychology, other ones from odontology on, and so on, you know. And, uh, but uh, there were people that uh, they wanted to redirect uh, their career. Mm -hmm. um, but I would say that the most of people, I would say 80%, they were from, from technical background. Okay. Uh, with nice. computer science or, like a healthcare system applied to um to to computing uh which is a career here as well um yeah everything related to 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 it's, maths or engineering it's uh, really nice actually to hear that um, mm. nowadays someone if they don't really like not really like if they want to change their field that they can actually do it because in the past mm. it wasn't so easy and i really like this approach that mm. yeah wants to go somewhere in a different field different direction they should be able to do it i remember i agree yes mm -hmm. in the past the requirements were like you can apply for this master for example only if you have a bachelor degree on this like uh, mathematics physics so you couldn't even apply if you had a uh, a bachelor in uh, psychology and I really exactly and it's the same I don't know if it's the same in Greece or but in Spain it's like a, it's, it's exactly what you say uh, if I I could only access uh, to computer uh, computing engineering mm -hmm. if I was coming from uh, uh, yeah. from the high school let's gonna say from the via yeah. uh, te uh, technical I don't know um, yeah, and uh, I mean you could apply but uh, of course they they the people that are coming from uh, the technical background they will have preference exactly uh, but uh, something that I like from United States is that uh, you can you know uh, you can uh, switch completely mm -hmm. um, and uh, and as well you know as, as we say like in my master there were people from different backgrounds mm -hmm. uh, and, and it's okay the important thing is you know that as your applications is being accepted and that's all. And then you do all your best. 
I agree. I totally agree. Mm. Yeah, unfortunately, I think in Europe, um, you still need to have a, re- a, a relevant, let's say, bachelor in order to apply on, on specific mm. uh, specific masters. masters. Yeah. Yeah, but here you pay a lot of money. So <laughs> well, even here, I think that they are going to allow that. Yeah, but I like this approach a lot, honestly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, engineer, how did you choose this uh, this path? What what inspired you when you were a kid? Or how did you yeah. choose? So, uh, oh, different things. So, the first <laughs> thing that I have to say, my parents... Uh, that they are the best. Uh, they got me like uh, they had me really, really in a young age, and mm-hmm. uh, they couldn't go to the university. I am the first generation, uh, mm-hmm. but uh, they are they are very intelligent and very autodidact. And uh, my father at the moment, um, he used to uh, get on board on a, on a ship for a long time. So because of his work, so um, instead we didn't have so much at that moment, right? And my father, my, my father used to uh, build uh, uh, like handmade uh, different toys. And mm-hmm. I remember specifically when I was like maybe f- four or five years old. This I don't know how you say in English, but this like a boards with the electric electrical uh, lamps, and okay. you have to like a pair. Like for example, you have all the countries and then all the capitals, and okay. then you have to pair the correct answer. And the correct answer it would uh, be the lamp it would be on. You know, know, so he did everything by hand. Yeah, and this is when I started to have a lot of curiosity um, in in electronics, uh, in engineering in general. Uh, He used to as well um, give uh, give me like a lot of toys uh, of building stuff. So um, because his job was uh, about that as well. He was technician in a control room in a a boat. So he he, he was like, I don't know, like uh, transferring me all the yeah. all that uh, passion for for engineering right and on the top of that my parents were always both at the same time with me and my sister it's like uh, do whatever that you want but I'll mm-hmm. do everything that I makes you happy and at that moment I remember that uh, computing internet everything started to I was gonna say uh, uh, be popular and so on mm-hmm. and one of my teacher in the school uh, he so uh, I think that I consider him like my first mentor. He was already uh, saying, Lord, I think that you have really good aptitudes and good skills for, for computing. So I would go in, in that direction. And I always had it clear. So um, yeah, that is where I chose uh, computing engineering. I really like your And story. I never I mean, regret that. Been... <laughs> this is this was my next question actually it's really nice that uh your father was you know the role model for this it's really really beautiful yeah and, yeah and uh, i guess um uh, family should do that motivate their children to do whatever they like doesn't matter mm-hmm. if it's in stem or whatever so it's really really beautiful uh, yeah, <laughs> because uh, as, as we say before you know in a thing that you think the same it's really hard to know what you want to dedicate uh, the rest of your life uh, to do right uh, that for example happened to my sister she you know, she took more time to to know what she wanted uh, but uh, yeah i i feel extremely lucky because uh, my parents in in both cases they were always really supportive and it's like mm-hmm. it's okay you just do whatever that makes you happy because you are gonna be working on that and exactly. we always know this story you're right it's like uh, do whatever that makes you happy and then you don't have to work never again and that's that's the thing, you know. How they felt then? How did they feel when you one day you announced them? You know, I'm leaving Europe. I'm going to US. How well, how, how you took this decision? I mean, what? So uh, you want to know what was in your head. <laughs> so you know, and you <laughs> that it was funny. So two things here. They are already used to that I do like things like that. I never say that I did or I'm gonna do something until the decision is taken because they know that uh, you know, even if they try, my mind <laughs> is uh, is made up and and that's all. Mm-hmm. Uh, my father, I think that I took it uh, like more sadly just because it was at the time that he was getting the retirement, mm-hmm. and uh, he was spending like almost forty years in Argentina. 
and uh, always travel in between Spain, Argentina, and he was tired. You know, he just mm -hmm. wanted to rest at home with my mom and so on. And then it's like, oh, now that I'm getting the retirement and then you go to the United States and it's gonna be hard. And it was like, no worries, because, you know, it's something that I wanted to do. Uh, I wanted to prove myself that I, I could just go to another continent, another country starting by from the scratch and, and, and you know, and, and that is what makes me happy. So they were really happy for me. You know. This is impressive because people, they tend to settle down, like to, they're afraid to leave their comfort zone, let's say. So uh, that's a really long, long, long story. Yeah. That. <laughs> we can discuss so this. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It's very impressive that, and I guess it was a long process to, with the interviews and everything. It wasn't something Oof, easy to do. Yeah, that's something that I usually mention here at Fermilab, um, because for me, it took like uh, almost six months. Mm -hmm. And I keep saying that, uh, you know, uh, being interviewed at Fermilab, it was one of the most challenging and difficult interviews that I always, uh, that I did because it was like, uh, you know, several, just to give you an idea, there was mm -hmm. one of the interviews that I was six hours uh, of, uh, you know, different questions with different teams uh, to prove because of course, you know, the United States, uh, let's go say work permit is, mm -hmm. is more difficult for that. And they can, they need to make sure that they are bringing the, the right person because it's, uh, it's they, they need to sponsor you to give you the work permit. So um, yeah, it was, it was very difficult, very challenging, but uh, I made it and I was so happy, uh, you know, and the, and the process, like the last, the last interview was the same process that I'm saying, you know, this, uh, they invite me to, to, mm -hmm. to come to the US uh, for one day and then have like a, a run, uh, another interviews, presentation of my career, mm -hmm. spend the time like uh, with colleagues and then, you know, be sitting for every laugh around and then, you know, get the decision, it's more or less, uh, Mm -hmm. Impressive. So you were so focused and determined that you will, you will. It was, it was very difficult. Yeah, yeah. And and I remember that when I got the call, uh, I they extended the offer. I was like, uh, uh, yeah, I, you know, I'm I'm going. And everyone was like, uh, there at certain. I like, I remember I'm going to Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> and they say, are you going to Chicago? Like, Why not? And they say, but you don't know anyone there. And I was like, which is the worst thing that I can happen? And if something yeah. goes wrong, I can always come back. You have to always be positive with this. And as you say, you cannot stay in the comfort zone mm -hmm. uh, because I think that the magic happens when you step out of that, mm -hmm. you know? And uh, it's something that I, I was like, uh, I never regret to, to have that decision because you know, I build uh, an amazing life here and, uh, you know, I did a master's. I have an amazing family group of friends. So I think that is great. Um, this is great. I don't know. This is great mm -hmm. what you say. You may, you took um, the decision and at the end it was a good decision. So it's a yeah, very it's great. good decision. But you never know when it's a good decision until, uh, you know, a lot of things uh, like, uh, how they say, the future can't right uh, of course you of just course. look back and you say okay I, I took the right decision so you have worked in both uh, CERN and Fermilab that are one the two mm. one of, I would say the biggest laboratories <laughs> uh, yeah. so I guess you have seen differences like in the way of working thinking already the one mm. is in Europe and the other is uh, in US so United US yeah of course so two things uh, yeah, they, they are, I mean, the thing is that, for example, CERN, as you say, CERN and Fermi Lab, they are uh, two of the, the biggest uh, laboratories uh, worldwide, right? Um, the thing is that, uh, for example, CERN is, uh, uh, is really international, both places mm -hmm. are really international, but uh, uh, the US uh, Fermi Lab is part of uh, one of the 17 national laboratories here in, in, in the US, right? So I would say that it's less international than CERN. I case. guess for the reason yeah. that you mentioned before, because it's harder it's to really get. really hard. Yeah, really hard. At least that you are coming like uh, with a PhD and you are working for mm -hmm. for a university, specific university. There's a collaborator, mm -hmm. uh, collaborator uh, from Fermilab. It's, it's difficult to bring people, but it's not impossible. You know, mm -hmm. the things that... Uh, um, and uh, something, for example, that I was uh, quite shocked when I, 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 I came to, to Fermilab 
is that uh, like at that moment, five years ago, the average of, of people working mm -hmm. at Fermilab, it was 55 years old. So okay. for me, it was like uh, really shocking. But then I, I saw the, the, the bright side that I, it's like, uh, yeah, it's because people enjoy so much working here that they stay forever, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, but of course, this is changing because, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of people are getting their retirement, but uh, as well, uh, Fermi Life is attracting, uh, you know, the the youngest uh, talent uh, from all around the world. Um, and yeah, and I would say that uh, it's not so different from the way of working, you know, okay. like comparing to United uh, to, to CERN, because mm -hmm. I think that both laboratories, as you say, we do science and mm -hmm. everyone is, is they have the same goal, right? That is mm -hmm. doing science and um, yeah. So um, I would say that uh, it's more or less the, the, the same. Okay, interesting, interesting. Mm -hmm. But I guess it's not easy to go from one office to the other in Fermilab, right? If I, <laughs> it's, it's not like CERN that you can actually go everywhere. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That I would say, well, it, it depends, right? I work, for example, in the FCC, uh, where is the uh, most of uh, computing. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, we have our office. It's like open space or you can have open. as well your own office as, as we have. But uh, yeah, I would say that uh, like, uh, the most of the of the buildings are are around. It's not, for example, okay. if you were working in the one that we were working in at CERN, and then you have to go to the to the main building, right? Mm -hmm. You have like a twenty minutes, I would yeah, say fifteen minutes walking. Yes. Here is the same. It's the okay. same. If I want to go to Wilson Hall, which is the the main building, I would go from FCC. I would say like as well 10, 15 minutes walking. So, okay. Mm -hmm. Do you think at Fermilab there are uh, more women in STEM than uh, than CERN? I know that if you don't have the numbers, you don't know, but... No, I have the numbers yes. because actually, uh, yeah, it's something I was expecting uh, that you were asking that. And uh, I think that uh, as far as I, I know, it was like a 26% in STEM, you know, mm -hmm. the job categories uh, here at Fermilab. And unfortunately, it's only uh, 17, 17, 18% uh, of women in scientific computing division, okay. which is the so, one that I belong to. So as you see, it's not it's not so high. Um, Are there any actions to promote actually science? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so uh, the Fermi Lab is like uh, they have uh, like a, a department that is called. Well, it's not, I don't remember exactly the name of the department, but it's, they are focusing EDI, which is Education, Diversity and Inclusion, and they mm -hmm. do a fantastic job. And what they try to do is to, to potentiate not only women, but as well all the minority groups that are uh, uh, here at Fermilab. Another thing that I forgot to say between the difference is like, as you can imagine at CERN, it's really international, but I'm mostly about EMEA, right? Europe, mm -hmm. Europe uh, I would say e Asia, and as well uh, North Africa. But uh, here in the United States, they mostly are from America. So this, and as well, I didn't have, I didn't have um, this, not this case, but uh, for example, in Europe, you don't have to face other things because we have the privilege there. But here, for example, I could be lucky enough to learn more, something that I was feeling so ignorant with that, for example, with the Black Matters, um, know more experience from Black scientists and see, mm -hmm. you know, the minority Native Americans, mm -hmm. um, Latinos in general. So what I love from working here is that uh, it opened my mind even more about other uh, cultures that I didn't have chance to work with in the past, as I was at CERN. So, and the Fermilab, of course, potentiate that. They want a, a diverse place and, and they have even an EDI task force where I part from. Um, and, um, and yeah, we try to uh, oversee all the issues that uh, uh, this minority group uh, can have and uh, try to improve all the process that it needs to be improved as well as well at here at Family Lab. So I think that uh, they do a, a fantastic job on that. It's just that, uh, you know, it's still long run. Of course. Uh, it's always like this, but... Uh, of course, and mm -hmm. you do your best as well, because I, I guess you try to find time in order to do all this... Um, uh, activities yeah. and work at the same time and you had your master as well so well done yeah but at some point 
at some point it's like even talking to to your uh, your management mm -hmm. it's like even if you want you cannot dedicate 100 of the time for uh, edi uh, mm -hmm. activities right i think that you can have like i don't remember the the exactly amount of hours but like you know, six hours per month um, that you can dedicate for that. This Otherwise, good. you can do it in your free time. You know, you can employ, like uh, use these six hours of your work to um, to get involved from that. But uh, otherwise, and we are happy to do it even in a, in a uh, do we need a, even in in our free time. So it's always Basic. good. It feels it, good. It, it's nice that I, I hear that um, they support it a lot. So you officially mm -hmm. it's uh, supported. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um pretty interesting so um what mm -hmm. i wanted um, to ask you so what so what is your opinion why do you do you actually do you think that we need more women in stem first of all always i think i need i know the <laughs> always, answer always always the question yeah. is why you think that your personal opinion i think honestly well one uh, as a person that I was always in a minority like mm -hmm. for example I'm the only woman in my team now oh, and okay. I think that I, when uh, we were at CERN in like we were in the same group right I mean some point in some point we were maybe two or three but they were always um, you know the minority as you say mm -hmm. and honestly I think that uh, uh well, how can I say this? I think that the women, they can provide a more balanced uh, view uh, to the female gender, um, as well in, improves, I don't know, like the teen culture, as we were saying, like, for example, I like to work with people, like diverse people, right? The more diverse you have your team, the more different views you have, and, and you get the best of each one, right? Exactly. And as well, personally, and I think there's demonstrated this, that uh, women are better organized. They, I think that they are more emotional. So I think that uh, something that uh, I love from this, something that I wanted to say is that being emotional, it doesn't mean that it's a, it's a weak point, right? Yes, I think course. that it's, it's like a, a really strong point that I think that uh, you emphasize better with uh, with uh, with your team members i think that you understand them better and um, and i think that that's that's something that we need you know because i think that uh, the job it doesn't have to be the center of your of your life you know mm -hmm. you need to do and put love in 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 every task that you do but as well you need to know how to work with uh, different people you know with different team members and i think that uh, that's something that uh, women they have uh, as a, as a, as a more emotional people i think that they have this um there's gonna say this positive thing that mm -hmm. uh, they can even emphasize better and i don't know your experience but um uh, I keep saying the same. Either at CERN, here at Fermilab, we are a minority. Yeah, but at the, I think that the women here, we are less competitive, you mm -hmm. know, and uh, in general. And uh, I think that uh, all women if uh, from your department, we were always supporting each other here at, uh, at, uh, at Fermilab, but as well when we were at CERN. You know, I think that that it was, it, it's, it's beautiful. So I have um, the same and, impression. Uh, yeah, and and that's why we need more women, you know, because I think that uh, that uh, it can bring more uh, good things uh, to the workplace. But uh, you know, that's a long story as well. From why we don't have so many, it's it's more exactly. uh, is okay. Uh, so I mm. think uh, Andriana wants to make a question. Wait. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I don't know if it's time for question or you want oh, it's to okay. it's a, it's a, <laughs> Because I wanted discussion. to connect to what you just said now, because it, you talk about two traits of uh, typical uh, women uh, characters, not to be emotional, to be yeah. less competitive. And it came to me the, the question that I, I often happen to ask to people, to, to women that work in a minority. So first in the yeah. IT department at CERN, where uh, the, the statistics says that uh, a bit more than one out of five uh, or less uh, one out of five uh, uh, people is a woman and then in Fermilab you have also confirmed that yeah whether you think that uh, if you look at the Lorena uh, 12 or 15 years ago whether working in this environment has changed your attitude to work and some traits of your personality in, in order to succeed 
Very in good. what you do or whether you have had the moments in which you had uh, to behave differently from what you would have liked to behave in order to um, not to be a, the girl you know you know what i yes. mean i think so, um, yeah so your question you know is I mean? like uh, your question is like uh, if uh, during these 15 years of my professional experience between CERN and and Fermilab if i uh, if i ever had to change the way that I was uh, behaving just because I was afraid to be church as a, as a woman? This is one thing. And whether if you have done it several times, then maybe this has, has changed you. You know, the way I you think are at work. Is, the thing as well is that uh, it's not the same the Lorena right now, the Lorena from CERN, like for example, that it was seven years ago. Uh, I think that I changed a lot. And as well, I did a lot of therapy as well. Uh, introspection, go to therapy or, you know. And I think that at this it depends on different things. I think that at first you need to be confident with yourself before, you know, um, before facing a situation. For me, it doesn't change anything. Like outdoors, I mean, uh, like the way that I'm behaving with the team, if I'm happy and confident, with myself with who I am and with the mistakes that I make and uh, so on you know so I would say that uh, I ever have to 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 uh, behave differently yeah like several years ago when I was naive and I was like uh, you know stressing for everything that I was happening you know I was like uh, I need to like don't get me wrong, but you know how competitive CERN can be. And I remember that uh, in some point I wanted to, to, I want to stay here and I want to do this and blah, blah, blah. But then you see how this was affecting your mental health and uh, the fact that uh, it was more, I don't know, it was not making me happy. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I think that uh, now, for example, I don't have to change anything just because I don't let my job interfere in my personal life or in my mental health. And this is why, and wh what I try to say with this is that uh, now I don't have to change anything. And I don't feel that uh, my mates or my supervisor or my team, they are treating me different because, mm -hmm. you know, like for example, if you have any problem as a, when it was the pandemic, you don't say like, uh, oh, I have to take the day off because I don't feel well. And they say, oh, this is because she, maybe she's a woman, you know? Uh, no, it's like, uh, I think that it depends as well how you take it because yeah. it's not the same, you know, that uh, if you take it, imagine that uh, what is in your mind, imagine that uh, you are taking the day off and you think that everyone is talking about you or they, everyone is, is saying things that maybe are not happening, but they are on your mind, you know? So this is why I say that, uh, um, I think that it's important to really, really, really work in your mental health and your confidence and think what it makes you happy and don't let, you know, other things affect you, like uh, thinking in different way and so on. Because mm -hmm. uh, honestly, as I said, in these five years, I, do, I don't feel, but of course that I was a long run, right? I was uh, learning different things, and but I never had uh, the problem of thinking, now, uh, oh, maybe they are treating me different because I'm a woman. Mm -hmm. I don't That's think nice. so. That. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're welcome. That's I hope nice. that I answered your questions. Yes, yes. Totally. <laughs> it was a very good question, actually. Really, really Yeah, nice thank because, you, Adriana. Thank you. Because, for example, even what you said, like, um, at the end, now you don't really pay so much you don't put so much uh, value on uh, on things like this or you don't think that the behavior is specific because you are a woman at the end if you think about it is it true or you adapt based on what adriana says maybe sometimes mm. after five years of working in an you environment adapt. Like this, you adapt yeah so at the end you don't know maybe maybe there is a possibility that uh, the person said it that said, told that said that sorry because indeed you are a woman maybe they thought of it but now mm -hmm. you are like i'm not gonna bother anymore because this will kill me so you just adapt yeah. at the end so yeah. i agree with that Adrian. is right <laughs> and as well and as well yeah i understand what, what you're saying and, and that's true i think that uh, 
Again, I think that uh, the 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 focus of of uh, of uh, your life is supposed to be your mental health. You know, yeah. I think that a human being are really vulnerable in terms of that. Of and course. now that, especially with the pandemic, that uh, you know, we give more important uh, importance mm -hmm. to to the mental health. I think that uh, once you work on that, I think that uh, doesn't matter what is happening in like mm -hmm. around you, that uh, you know how to adapt, as you say. You know. Um, yeah. And it's something happening, I even don't bother. Um, I can tell you other situations that I, I could feel another pressure as being as a woman, but we can talk about yeah. this um, mm -hmm. in, in later on. Yeah. Do, do you mm. think that you have uh, ever, maybe never, been judged for your personal or career choices because you are uh, a woman? Yeah, that's, that's let's gonna say, that is going to be a really tricky question. Mm -hmm. And I hope that, uh, again, that's my personal opinion, yeah, course, my personal life and so on. I would say two things here. Okay. When you are successing on your career, mm -hmm. there is going to be always someone who is not happy for you or thinks that uh, you don't deserve it. And that's something that uh, you can see. Oh, they they can They can get any 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 reason that they want like for example oh because she's a woman she was promoted mm -hmm. because she was the only one you know mm -hmm. and they need to promote again this is something that uh, it could have could have happened yeah because i've been promoted already and uh, i don't know not like in front of me because mm -hmm. in another thing is that uh, these kind of situations they never gonna tell you in your face oh. you know yeah it could happen yeah but uh, as far as i know no Another thing that I'm being, I was feeling judged, uh, I never can pronounce uh, uh, properly this word. I think that it was more here in the United States, uh, but I think in general, but I'm more here, but uh, maybe because of my age right now. Mm -hmm. I think that uh, you are more uh, with, the, with the choice of not having family. This and was just my question, like, actually. Uh, yeah, yeah, not having family or not uh, like uh, I constantly and I just want to think that I not because I'm in the US, it's just because of my age, because like obviously when I was at 10, I was uh, much younger, but I like uh, you say, oh, you are 38 years old, 37, whatever. And then it's like, uh, uh, and are you not married? Why? Why you don't want to have children? And I can tell you once I received this question that is like uh, oh you don't have kids and I was like no and they say like um oh but you will want and that I remember that I, I that question just popped in my mind like uh that it, that it was extremely rude you know because it's mm -hmm. why you expect that I want to have kids and another thing that I and this is something that I talk with my colleagues my female colleagues here at Femila is like for example when you go to to uh, these uh, uh, inspirational talks and so on, and you always see how to balance your social life or your private life, sorry, with uh, with the uh, professional one. Mm -hmm. And they are always talking about how to have the balance with your family. And mm -hmm. something that we always say is like, I miss talks of people that are, they have chosen not to have family, they mm -hmm. give priority, not only your professional career, it doesn't have to be that, but uh, to have the freedom to do, I don't know, work um, in another things, um, travel all the time as we do, you know, and it doesn't have to be that you want to be success on your, uh, on your career, right? For me, the success of my career is just to be happy mm -hmm. when I'm waking up and say, let's gonna do this, you know, yeah. not like I want to be the boss or be the best one. Uh, I just want to, to, to be happy like that. So then what I try to say with this is that I, I felt just with that. You know, um, when people say that uh, uh, you you have chosen not to have family, uh, not to settle down in one place, that I, I prefer to be like you know uh, traveling all the time. That is my my passion, my my focus in life, and uh, yeah, and with a new experience and mm -hmm. so on. So this is when I feel a little bit more uh, pressure yeah. because uh, as well, and I understand that there are a lot of. Uh, women that they have family and they are struggle with the personal life because it's like I have to go uh, to the nursery or mm -hmm. whatever but as well we have another things you know yeah. and it's, it's not because I mean you have to to 
like a really highlight which is your personal life yep. and, that, and have it clear and this is i think that uh, we're still behind on that it seems that uh and that's mm -hmm. maybe one of the problems right because uh the other people that are there there are not so many women in stem because maybe they expect that uh in some point oh i have to choose between my personal career or my sorry my professional exactly. career or my or my private life and it doesn't yeah. have to my parents they, they they always were really clear with that and to me and my sister is like do whatever that you want be happy travel around the world if you don't want to have kids or don't get married or whatever just be a good person and do whatever that makes you happy that's, it's uh, that's the it's, point. it's really sad that both sides they have to justify their choices if you don't uh -huh. have a family you have to justify why you don't have and the women that they have family they have to struggle to find a balance between career and family because I mean, they have to be in both sides good, let's say. So sometimes they have to take a step back, which is very sad for, from my perspective. Yeah. And of course, it's not uh, the rule. I mean, of course, there are cases that they can manage both. But this, I would say, depends of where you work, in which country you work, and uh, many, many different other yeah, stuff. Well, it's, it's not only the country that you are working, because as I said, it's like... Uh, I. Uh, as I was saying before, I don't want to say that uh, because it's not true, you know, it's like just because the United States is different or mm -hmm. whatever, not at all, because I, I like the most of my friends here, they are my age and no one is married or with family and they are traveling around the world as we do. Um, I think that is more that both people need to have clear that both choices are are perfectly Valid. fine. Exactly. I think that the problem is the tolerance, you know. Um, I think that uh, this is why I, I really highlight about the mental health, because I think that it uh, doesn't matter what you have chosen, doesn't matter mm -hmm. what is your private life, you know. Uh, what it matters as a team members is is what you, what we, mm -hmm. how we work together. Exactly. If it's a really, um, uh, like for example, if you have problems at home, for whatever that is the reason, I don't have to highlight or I don't have to uh, think better or less just because it's one reason or another. You know, you have to respect the private life on that. Um, and for that, you need tolerance. You need to be tolerant with a person that uh, if he has a family, a person that uh, doesn't have family, a person that uh, they want to um, uh, spend their time in another things. Uh, that is uh, the, the most important for me. And so uh, we are missing uh, empathy, let's say. <laughs> this is why we need more women. <laughs> yeah. No, it's a joke. Yeah. No, it's a joke because, for example, my supervisor is a man and he's, he's really amazing. He's a, mm -hmm. not only a good manager, he's a good leader. And mm -hmm. he, 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 for him, what it matters is uh, how you perform and that work. Doesn't matter about the rest, you know. But uh, if he's always open to listen, he is, uh, he is always, um, um, he's really em empathetic, you know, okay. like for example, if something okay. happened, I don't feel well and so on, don't worry, take your time, you know, he knows that uh, you are going to be responsive in, in another time, you know, uh, so I think, I think we are improving something. in terms of that, we are getting mm -hmm. there slowly, slowly, but we are getting there. Yeah, definitely. So in order to let a bit of time for the rest to, uh, for to ask their questions, maybe just a few words for the new engineers, like not engineers, women in STEM, like what would you advise them? Like the young ones that yeah. they have faced anything yet. <laughs> yeah, I would say like, as I was saying before, so several things, right? Uh, I would say several advices. As I was saying before, it's like, don't let that at your job uh, mm -hmm. take over your life. I think that uh, it's important to, to first choose, and it's okay if it takes more time than expected, uh, travel around the world and then take the decision about what to study, or if you just finish your studies and then you need to, um, to, to start working, just thinking what it makes you happy. Uh, see yourself in several years and say, see, do I see myself doing this? for every day of the week and uh, mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. I think that it's important to establish boundaries uh, between uh, your personal life and, and your professional career as well. Uh, I think that it's a good thing to create routines mm -hmm. in order to be constant with uh, your career. Um, and especially 
Uh, I would say that uh, please, please, please take care of your mental health, which is more important. There is no job in the world that uh, is worthy if it's destroying your mental health. I think that uh, uh, the important thing is that enjoy what you do with uh, do with love every task, even if it's horrible task. Uh, do it with uh, as much as as the best as you can, and uh, enjoy that because I think that uh, it's important. And all of this. It can be summarized that um, you need to know who you are, okay? You need to know uh, to know yourself. I think that you need to know what you need, what makes you happy, and uh, uh, and not let everyone else decide for you. You know, not your family, not the society, not uh, your your colleague, because what is working for you maybe is not working for me. So you really need to know what you need and to know yourself better, right? I love what I do. I love making mistakes. I love, uh, you know, and that's another thing. Don't be afraid to make mistakes because that's the way of, of growing, yeah. you know. Uh, I think that I constantly, and I don't know you, but I had this experience in the past. I remember when I was making mistakes and it was the, the end of the world. <laughs> and it's Hello, like, of course. it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> you know, mistakes equal a better process. Yeah. It's, it's like this it's because you learn from the mistakes and then you create a better process and you can apply this professionally or in your in your private life I you know um, yes <laughs> it, that, that's the thing you know I think that uh, that's uh, that's important it's uh, it's to know yourself uh, know what makes you happy don't be afraid to make mistakes and if if it, if you do them if you make them just embrace them you know that is gonna price. it's gonna be there so and don't be afraid of course of studying stem uh, in yeah. stem because it's a wonderful it's a wonderful field and uh yeah i think that uh you learn so much either you know as professionally working with the best uh, colleagues ever but as well from 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 at the point of view of um of uh, of be working with other women that are so success as as you are, so so I I totally so. totally agree. I mean, I mm. wouldn't uh, change my 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 field as well. <laughs> I, that is right. That's yeah. uh, we are extremely lucky. Yeah, we're extremely lucky. Uh, so please uh, let me know if there is any question. I will check the chat as well. So yes, FCC, Feynman Computing. Ah, Center. yeah, Tony. <laughs> uh, okay, Maria has to leave. Um, is there any question? Yeah. And thank you, Tony, for, for the clarification, because I say FCC <laughs> yeah. and I didn't realize yeah. <laughs> people knew maybe which was the, na the name. <laughs> <laughs> Tony was one, uh, one of my first bosses, a really great boss. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> So there is no question from what I see. So it was pretty clear <laughs> everything that you said. No, oh, I'm happy with that then. <laughs> okay, let's wait another one, two minutes. Uh, so to, to sum up, you will do everything. If you had to do them, to do everything again from scratch, you will make the same choices again, right? For everything, yeah, I, ne I never regret. Perfect. I never regret anything that I did Perfect. because, as I said, there are. Before I say like something, I took the the right decision, but I always say that you never take uh, bad or good decisions, right? You just take uh, paths and and then you learn from from everything. So, I exactly. think that uh, yeah, I would do ever. I would do the same exactly. Yeah, probably I would have left Spain even earlier okay. because I you know I left Spain like a really yeah I think that I was 26 so okay yeah. well it was the same uh, for me I think <laughs> yeah <laughs> so I, I do, understand <laughs> do you regret uh, like uh, not having uh, left earlier uh, I, I, I couldn't leave earlier because I had uh, two bachelors and then I left. Uh, so, it's very true. Yeah, because when I chose to to follow, let's say, the engineering field, 
many people try to discourage me because of what you said before. As an argument, they were telling me that, uh, but you would like to have a family afterwards. So you are already 22. So if you start now in a cold polytechnic, as we say it in Greece, it's five yeah. year studies. So already 27, you will start a new job. So already 30, let's say. So when you will have a family. So I, I was uh, struggling uh, and uh, but I didn't have, I, I mean, I never had doubts. I mean, there were, it was their opinion. They didn't know yeah. me. So there were, there were some of them even betting, and they were my professors, they were even betting for how long I will stay in the university before I actually quit, because they were thinking that uh, it's going to be tough, I will realize that uh, I don't want to do that, and what after? And yeah, well, both we broke them wrong, right? Yeah. <laughs> so so I, them really wrong. Yeah, I, that I is love right. the fact, and I'm trying as much as I can to motivate more women to to follow uh, this path because, as you mentioned before, it's great. It's yeah. very challenging. I mean, it shouldn't have gender. Let's say, I mean, whoever wants to study that should do it. Doesn't matter yeah. if you're a woman or whatever. And that right. yes, that's why we are trying. You were trying here when you were at CERN, you were trying with wheat. Now you are trying there to motivate uh, women to. Yeah, because we are path. part from here at Fermila, we are part from different uh, minority groups. Or, well, no minority, I, would, I, I don't like to say that word, <laughs> but yeah. Uh, yeah, different diversity groups, are, right? Uh, uh, we are part of Women in Technology, uh, well, sorry, Women in Initiative. I was like mixing the, the groups, uh, Society of Women Engineers, uh, many, EDI, <laughs> Society of uh, Hispanic Engineers. Yeah, so I think that it's important uh, to, to be part of one of the groups in whatever workplace, uh, because I think that is your safety place. And uh, mm -hmm. I think that, uh, you know, you can share your experience and get more advices um Course. related to your workplace uh in these groups like uh, maybe you know if you don't know anyone that's the first thing that i did you know when i joined joined uh, formula i didn't know anyone so the first thing that i did it was joining this uh these groups and they were already you know Course. welcoming um because they can and... they can be mentors for you you know in the yeah I, they I are the, the same feeling yeah uh, yeah exactly because i'm lucky i have a a female manager so I'm lucky yeah. in that sense so yes for me I, I don't uh, lack of empathy let's say so yeah yeah but uh, it's it's funny because for example I never had a, a, a direct supervisor uh, who was female oh yes oh, yeah here no. never yeah. no I could have like a department head Mm -hmm. or division head mm -hmm. as a female but a direct supervisor oh. I always uh, had men's and uh, as I say, now I'm extremely lucky that, uh, you know, all my bosses were, were amazing, right? Um, but uh, what I'm trying to say is that, uh, like, the one that I have now, it's, uh, he is uh, really, really amazing on that. Nice. I think nice. that uh, he emphas um, he's really empathetic. He's a good leader. He knows, uh, you know. Um, and he's the one that I is supporting, especially, oh, you have to join to all these groups, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah I think that, that that's great but great it's funny together. back to the what you say about um about uh, your past uh you know when you decided to study two bachelors mm -hmm. it's funny that you say that because my sister is he did the same exactly the same two mm -hmm. different uh, uh bachelors uh in her case no one was uh like discouraging her about uh okay you will have family or whatever no in her case it was most mostly focus on on professional um mm -hmm. career right they were telling her i think that a start start now a new bachelor is gonna be like a bad uh, from the point of view of your professional also career this, because it's, this, yeah. yeah and she was like really you know i i cannot believe you know she was like it, 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 she was feeling really bad because i was like i i, I my first choice is not what i wanted and she finished the bachelor as you did. And she was like, uh, but I want to study another thing. My parents were very supportive as, as I did, right? But uh, yeah. and My and family was there. as well. My family was super supportive. The rest weren't, but I didn't care. I mean, I had my family by my side, so that's it. That's enough. That's so, an important thing to be surrounded by people that are always uh, looking after you. Of you course. Know? 
So I don't want to waste more of your time because I know that you have to work as well. And <laughs> so it's morning and for the rest, uh, it's uh, before weekend. So everybody. Yeah, everyone wants needs to, to go. <laughs> so thank you very, very, very much for, for this interview. I'm really happy. And I'm happy to see you again because, yes, uh, you have left already for five years, you said before. Five time years, flies. I'm going to, yeah, time the next flies. week is going to be five years that wow. I started the Fermi Lab. Wow. Five years. Ooh. So <laughs> it's a long I, time. I wish you the best and Thank keep you. motivating women around you and uh, support them because I know that you already do that. And yeah. uh, I'm very happy for that. And thank you very much again. And thanks everyone that uh, was with us together uh, today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. Yeah, thank, thank you so much. And I hope to see you at some point yes. uh, here at Fermilab. I would be oh, happy. Yes. I would be <laughs> thank you very much. Yeah. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Ciao. <laughs> Ciao, Eva. <laughs> Ay, qué linda. Ciao, ja, ja.